Writing does not have to start with a blank page. By having an efficient note-taking system with a strong network of resources and ideas, your writing is almost complete. All you have to do is put the pieces together into one cohesive whole. This shiny purple rock app is what I've chosen for my information bank, and in this video, I'll share how I craft my writing pieces with the valuable gems inside it. I'll share my writing process from my weekly newsletter, all the way from the initial structure to ideation and writing, so hopefully you can take away a thing or two for your own workflow. If you want something similar, feel free to check out my free templates or my ultimate starter vault, links in description. Anyways, let's take a peek into the vault. First, I'll share the different systems and structures I have in my vault to aid my creative workflow. Right now, I just have a main note to keep track of all of my newsletter editions, my weekly wonderings, which use data view queries to sort them all based on their publish date. So it will find all of the notes that are in my output slash newsletter folder, and it will display them on here, sorted by their publish date. And to create each note, I have a template that I use to generate the headers. So I can just open that real quick, my weekly wondering template. And I just use templater variables to set the title. And in here, I just define the structure of the newsletter. If you don't know much about data viewer templater, I'd recommend you check out my school video to see how you can set up your own workflows. So my newsletter just contains things that I found were interesting from the past week. So maybe things that happened in my life, some insightful content I consumed, uh, some impactful things or experiences I had any ramblings or musings from walks or self-reflection. Next are my types of notes inside the vault that I use as building blocks for my newsletter. I know this video is about writing, but like I said before, idea capturing is still an essential part of the creative process. Luckily for me, everything information related is brought into my Obsidian vault, so I have lots of inspiration and ammunition to work with. Each of these workflows captures a certain type of note with specific information and ideas. So the first thing I have are input notes, which help me keep track of the content I consume. Something like this. It helps me generate links to other ideas in my vault and just gives me a space to dump all my highlights and thoughts. Also lets me store the started and finished dates just for extra information. Next, I have thought notes to help capture more personal ideas that I want to differentiate from my more objective Zettelkasta notes. You can learn more about both of these workflows in my Building a Second Brain video. When I'm out and about without access to a desktop or obsidian, I use the app Fleeting Notes for quick capturing my ideas. It's Google Keep but on steroids as it lets me create links as well as automatically sync with obsidian. It's completely free and I use it for when I'm on walks to take notes of YouTube videos or just random ideas that come to mind. If I open up my greenhouse note, as you can see, I have a lot of different fleeting notes from the YouTube videos I consume or just random ideas. The last part of my input workflow are my daily notes. Since my newsletter revolves around things related to my days, my daily note helps me keep track of all of these things. To write consistently and authentically, you should write about the things you're most passionate about and that is best found in the recurring ideas in your daily notes. If I head to my weekly review, every day I have little snippets that don't necessarily add up to much on their own, but if I take note of them and collect them all after a week's worth, I can make out some connections and ideas. So now that we got the juices rolling, it's time to go over my thought process while filling out the template. When I want to create a new edition, I just open up the command palette and type in this command I made, which automatically creates a new note. And then I'll just put in the number. In this case, it'll be the 11th edition and it'll automatically generate. And if we head back to my weekly wondering, you can also see it there. But since there's no published date yet, it'll be at the bottom. So now I'll start going through my different daily notes, my different inputs, my different thoughts, just to find anything useful from them. So first, I'm going to use my weekly note to look at all the different accomplishments I had this week to put in my life category. Let's check here. I did start talking in this new community, so I'll put that for um, Andrew Kirby. And I agreed upon making a video for Tiago Forte. 
Just keep looking through the accomplishments. Yeah, I did do a bunch of leading notes coding this week, so I'm just gonna include it there too, just so I can also advertise the app a bit more. So next, I'm gonna go through my content log to see what kind of resources I could share. Okay, so there is this one I wanna check out, so I will just click on it. I'll just copy this line and embed it as a block. You can also just control click on these icons. Open this up as well. These are actually fleeting notes. Also put this in there. And in this note, it talks about Jeff Bezos saying that the world will naturally try to make you conform to societal standards, which makes it hard to be unique and be yourself, which is related to this idea I had earlier on how people prefer conformity over individuality and maybe even identity confusion. And then today I also came across, if I just open up that note, after a chat with someone, I came across the idea of a purple cow on how if you're looking at a field and you just see a bunch of cows, you won't really notice much. But if you see a purple cow, it'll just be completely unexpected and attention grabbing, which is obvious, but it does bring a good point. And on top of that, I found out about this 15 year old streamer called Crossmouse that throws raves on his streams. Uh, epilepsy warning, but I don't know, I just found it so cool. So like these are all different ideas. Like this is more like a meme -y entertainment thing. But then there was also like an insight from Jeff Bezos and like his final letter to shareholders. But they all like have the same idea of being unique. So for this, I will just include all of the notes I just referenced earlier. I'll just copy paste these. So I think this would be the thing I talk about for the week. And then for actionable things, if we head back to my greenhouse note, I can talk about my late night McDonald's run, I guess, and just share some of the ideas I had during it. After chatting with the person today, which I met through school, I will also just share uh, the idea of reaching out to people online in these communities and developing an online presence so you can form these kinds of relationships. Luckily, I had all my ideas laid out to me from my notes throughout the week, but what if I wanted to look at more older and hidden notes in my vault? To keep it relevant, let's see if I can find out about how we can use note-taking systems to make the writing process easier. First, I would go and see if there's a note related to the idea by opening up the quick switcher and searching up something related, like writing. So if I look through the note, there's something based on note storage systems within the links. And if I click on this, I can see things like a slip box. It also leads back to the writing mock. At the bottom of this note, I reference the book How to Take Smart Notes, which talks about how you can use the Zettelkasten methodology, just the overall idea of linked thinking, to make the writing process start before you even start writing. Just keep scrolling. Talks about something called a slip box and different tools. Okay, if I head to backlinks, I can see what notes this is linked to, and one of them is the slip box. So I'll go over here. And Slipbox, also known as Zellikosten, is a permanent foundation of knowledge, and it shows some benefits. So we can compare these benefits to our main focus to see if, this, if these things make the writing process easier. So it won't be able to help us understand things, but it can help us organize our ideas, which is crucial for things like outlining and seeing what information you already have on the topic. It helps us develop topics over time as we slowly build up our knowledge through evergreen notes. And as I'm writing this, I also have a note on evergreen notes so I can check this out as well. Which also talks about how evergreen notes are all interconnected. So then I can search up connections in my quick switcher and it shows a bunch of different notes on connections. So it can help us retrieve things easier. Go back and um, I also have a note on making connections between ideas which brings up the idea of how new ideas can be incorporated in already existing notes we have to come up with new understandings. So I can also add this to the note and I can also add all the notes we've come across so far. And then we can start organizing some of this information. It's this one. Oops. So these are more benefits and this would be the different structures of note-taking systems we can have. Move this up here as well. And we can also make a sub list for connections and how they play a part in making the writing process easier. 
and then at the bottom I'll just add resources and I'll link how to take smart notes. And since I use Obsidian, I'll also go to my Obsidian mock to see if I have any notes related to this topic. And if I check in my backlinks, I have notes on Eleanor Connick's video on how to turn your notes into articles and books using Obsidian. And I have notes here that I can reference as well. Copy this. And yeah, it's already a tiny bit of structure to work with. And from here, I can continue filling in the gaps through more notes or just through research. I can also search this in the search bar because I do want to elaborate maybe on the idea of connections. I'm going to use, I'm going to click on this so it shows a bit more context for each note so I can see how connections is being used. But there is not much in here. So now I would say this is a pretty, pretty hefty, pretty packed structure for my newsletter. So now it's just time to start writing. I'm going to close this. And yeah, I'll open up two panes, I guess. One will have the notes that I have open, and one will be the actual content I'm going to write. So as I write, I'll just move around and combine ideas from these different notes to elaborate on whatever main idea I have, pulling insights from older notes if necessary. A few moments later. I decided to finish everything off screen just because, I don't know, I feel like you wouldn't want to watch me write for two hours straight. Once it's finally done, I'll just upload it to Substack, the place I use for hosting my newsletters. And then I'll start converting these text blocks into notes I can reference in the future. So in this case, I don't think I have one on me saying I haven't feel stressed before. I'll, I'll check just to be sure. I don't. So I'm going to open up the command palette and create a new thought about how I've never felt stressed. This is a reflection. Context, weekly wondering 11, feelings, blah, blah, blah. And then for thoughts, I will just take what I had in here and paste it in. And then I'll make the link to this note. And then I'll also take this, the universal need to be unique and do the same thing. Actually, I'll turn this to a normal note. Now I'll link it with other notes like authenticity. I do not have one on that. Um, uniqueness. I guess I don't really have any notes on here, so I'll have to connect it with the rest of my vault. Individuality? Individualism. Um, I think it would be best here if anything. So I'll just put universal need to be unique. And then I will paste the content in here. Get rid of this and make the link. As for the links I shared, there is a huge section on Layla Hormozzi, so I'm going to make a note on her. And I'll create the note on how to work long hours. Link it to productivity. And a bit of hustle culture because this is like somewhat unhealthy, I guess. And then I'll just copy paste everything and link the note once again. So yeah. I was able to create a published version and I was also able to add all the new ideas back into my Obsidian vault. If you want some more resources on how to create outputs using Obsidian, I would highly recommend this video by Eleanor, the writer of the weekly roundup, as she shares her brainstorming workflows when writing a blog. A lot of content and a lot of different tips. But yeah, I hope now you can see the potential Obsidian has in making your writing workflow easier as now you don't have to start from scratch. Writing becomes a incremental process that develops over time as you consume more content and experience more things. Let me know if you have any other workflows or questions you have in the comments below and subscribe for more Obsidian or productivity related content. This has been John Maverick. Stay mindful.